Hello and welcome to this Church Without Wall service streamed on behalf of St Stephen's in Bolwash and All Saints in Otbrook. It's great to be connected with you again today wherever you are and thank you so much for watching. Well all the details about um, how we're going to open our church buildings for public worship have been placed on a letter which I've sent out to all those in our church family. Um, you'll see from that letter that next Sunday, that's the 19th of July, we're going to open All Saints in Otbrook at 10am for a joint service of Holy Communion. That's going to be a said service and that service will be a one-off and then we'll review how that went. Uh, if you'd like to register for that service, all the details of how you can do that are on the letter that I sent and also all the protocols that we need to operate within are also uh, on that um, letter and we are going to continue these um, church without wall service services for the foreseeable uh, future. Um, jo our organist contacted me in the week to say that very sadly her nan had died. Um, her nan's funeral is on Wednesday the 22nd of July and um, do please hold Jo and all her wider family um, in your prayers at this time. And now we're going to pray. Loving God, thank you for this day and the promise in your word that you are with us always. We pray that Jo and her family will know your presence with them in their sadness. And for all of us watching this service, May we know your presence and your power and your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's reading is taken from the book of Matthew, verse 7, chapters 24 to 27. The wise and foolish builders. Therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. I am a foolish man. My Lord Blackadder says that if a hungry cannibal cracked my head open, there wouldn't be enough inside to cover a small water biscuit. He also said that the Renaissance is something that happened to other people, wasn't it? But I have a cunning plan. I'm going to build my house on this sand. Look how smooth it is. Look how quick and easy it will be to build on. I also believe that it's okay to leave unwanted babies outside to die. For women to be owned by their husbands as chattels. For children to go into child labour. For the rich to live surrounded by the starving poor. And that the earth has a limitless supply of natural resources. Let's see what happens when the rains come and the winds blow. I am a wise man. I built my house on this rock. I hear the words of Jesus' teaching and I apply them. Especially these four messages from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Firstly, we should seek first the Kingdom of God. We should not judge others. Peacemakers are the children of God, and we should love our enemies. See what happens when the rains come down and the winds blow. 
my house built on this rock of Jesus teaching stands firm. Maybe I should have been inside the house. So how are the foundations of our lives being exposed by the winds of COVID-19 and the rains of lockdown? Well, if we have firm foundations, we're better able to cope with the stresses and uncertainties of the unprecedented situation we find ourselves in. The constraints we face, unable to meet friends and family, go to work, go to school, go to church, to get those convenient luxuries we've become accustomed to. And we find ourselves confronted by the uncertainties of our human existence and the vulnerability of human life. Both things which we've gone to such lengths to insulate ourselves from. It brings us face to face with the most basic questions of life. What are we here for? What have we done with our lives? What do we want to do with our lives? What's most important to us? What do we truly cherish? And painful insights. If we now know what those things are, why have we spent so little of our time pursuing them? Coronavirus shows us how terrible it is to waste our lives embroiled in endless battles for wealth, power and status. Not to recognise the value in the people around us, in our friends and our family, our colleagues, but also in the strangers. How terrible it is not to give our lives meaning every hour of every day, honouring the sacredness of life and the according all living things the respect they deserve. It demonstrates to us the value of freedom, freedom to move about, freedom to love, freedom to live with dignity and security. And more recently, it has exposed uh, fractures in our world, in our community and society, which is divided, broken, not as it should be, with climate crisis, refugee crisis, racial crisis, big gaps in, in um, divides between rich and poor, old and young, in age, in class, in gender, um, and in race. In the reading this morning, we hear Jesus say that everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice has a firm foundation. But which words? Jesus said a lot of things in his Sermon on the Mount of which these are just the final few. Well, given what I've just said, I want to concentrate on four things. Firstly, that we should seek God's kingdom first. That we should not judge any other people. That as God's children, we should be peacemakers. And most challengingly of all, that we should love our enemies. Well, here in this leafy uh, villages that we live in, you may say, who are my enemies? Who do I need to make peace with? And I imagine that all of you out there would be united in agreeing with me that we no longer live in the medieval world of Baldrick, where uh, child labour and abuse is okay, where um, men can own their wives, um, where um, slavery is okay, where there's rape and pillage. But there are some things which you out there disagree on, aren't there? about whether this country should be leaving the European Union at this time, whether we should be coming out of lockdown more quickly or less quickly, whether or not we should be wearing face masks more or less, maybe whether Dominic Cummings should still be advising our Prime Minister, and most recently and poignantly, whether or not our flagpoles in the villages should fly the gay pride flag. These issues matter to people, they're important, but they're also highly polarising and have led to a great deal of um, criticism and abuse and um, hateful um, content and animosity, especially online. In my work at Rolls-Royce, um, the lockdown has not made things any easier. In fact, things have become more pressured. And a couple of my work colleagues in particular are um, greatly struggling with this, uh, both at work but also at home with their families. One of them I happen to get on with very well and it's been a pleasure to carve out some time to come alongside them and work together to find a way through uh, the things we need to achieve to support them socially and at work. With the other one it's not so easy. They are finding it really difficult and they are expecting other people to step up in order to um, help get through. But of course other people are finding that difficult. I'm finding that difficult um, because of the pressures I'm under and so the situation gets more and more tense daily. Um, we get into tension and I find myself tempted to bite back and tell them what I really think. Sometimes I do. But now 
more and more, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I manage to bite my tongue, put myself in their shoes, remind myself that they are struggling like the rest of us. Slowly but surely, I'm changing my habits. If we only love our friends, we just reinforce the silos of our groups. We just strengthen the echo chambers that we inhabit, especially online, in social media. Jesus said, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. We have to love our enemies to move forward. We have to love the other. We have to love the different. And so far so good, but as Jesus said, we have to find a way to put it into practice. Archbishop Justin Welby believes that the church is called to be a reconciling presence in the world. And he's conceived a programme through his Reconciling Leaders Network, simply called Difference. It aims for all our meetings to be holy encounters in which we can use, which we can use as a force of reconciliation to break down barriers and polarisation. Based on the evidence that 95% of our behaviour is subconscious and 45% of our actions are habitual, it suggests that we develop three habits to combat this. Firstly, be curious. When you enter, encounter disagreement with someone, stop and wonder why. Don't assume you are right. Listen to their story as Jesus so often did with those he met. Secondly, be present. Avoid any impulse to walk away. Stay and engage and have the courage to be vulnerable. Stand in their shoes and remember that the way we treat everyone else is the way we treat Jesus himself. And thirdly, reimagine. Invite God into the situation. Be open-minded. Try to consider possibilities however far-fetched. Don't be cynical or lose hope and remember that God can do more than we can ever ask or imagine. Think about how the prophets of the Old Testament worked with God to change the world. Justin Welby has said, when we begin to handle diversity creatively and sincerely, honouring one another in our deep difference, we can begin to flourish together in previously unthinkable ways. Reconciliation is the transformation of alienation into a new creation, not only restored but reinvigorated. So I think that one of the greatest challenges of our time is this. Will we have the courage to seek such a remaking of our world? Will we have the courage to seek such a remaking of our world? And so I invite you this week to meet the divisions you encounter in a new way. Ask yourself three questions. Where do I see division, fracture, relationships that are broken? Where do I see opportunities to build bridges and have better relationships? And where might I invite God in to bring healing and renewal? So, loving our enemies in practice is not optional. It is essential if we are to reverse the spiral into disagreement and difference in which we find ourselves. In closing, I'm going to read a mashup of the last words of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount taken from the Message Translation and the King James Version. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life on. If you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your lives, you are like a stupid carpenter who built his house on a sandy beach. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Wise words indeed. Amen. Morning everybody, I hope you're all doing okay. Who knows the story of Goldilocks and the three bears? Well, it's the story of a little girl who goes into a stranger's house, the three bears, when they're not at home. And then, when they do come home, she gets really frightened. What lessons can we learn from Goldilocks and the three bears? Well, maybe we can learn that we shouldn't go into somebody else's house when they're not home. 
It's a simple story about a girl and three bears, but it teaches us an important lesson. And that's what Jesus did. He told simple stories to help people to understand hard to understand things. And he called them parables. So I thought I'd tell you one of those parables today. And the parable today is about two men wanting to build a house. Well, the first man was a wise man and he wanted to build a house and he knew to build a house he needed a strong foundation. So he spent a lot of time looking. He would look high and low, looking for just the right spot. He wanted it to be right. Well, eventually, after a lot of looking, he found the perfect, the perfect flat rock. And he knew that would make a great foundation for his house. So then he started to build. And he put the walls up and a door. And he built it all on the foundation and it was strong and firm. And then when he'd done that, he put his roof on. And it was strong and firm. And he moved in. Now the wise man lived in the house for many, many years. Lots of storms came, but the house stood strong. Winds would come, really strong winds. And the rain would fall. But still, the house stood still because it was on a firm foundation. Next, Jesus told us about a foolish man who built his house. Now, he was in a hurry and he just wanted to quickly build a house. He didn't really care where, as long as it was a bit flat. So he quickly found some sand and thought, that'll do. He wasn't bothered about any foundations, so he started building. Everything was slipping and sliding around, but he quickly built it because he was very, very impatient to move into his house. So he was like, right, that'll do, that'll do. Now I need to put a roof on. So he put his roof on. Yeah, that should do it. And he moved in. Guess what happened when the first storm came along? Well, the really strong winds came back. Can you imagine what happened? Let's see. Oh dear. Yeah. The house blew apart. There was no foundations to hold it down. And so the foolish man had to move out. Well, Jesus then went on to explain what the story meant. He said, the wise man is like someone who listens to Jesus's instructions and then follows the instructions. Jesus' instructions are always right. When a person builds his life on Jesus's words, he is building a strong foundation. He will be strong inside. The foolish man in the parable was like somebody who listened to Jesus' instruction, but then didn't follow them. A person who doesn't build his life on Jesus' words will not have a strong foundation. He will be weak inside. The people were amazed 
at the parable that Jesus had taught. They were happy that he had made things very easy to understand. His parable helped them want to listen to more things that Jesus had to say. The parable also made them want to follow Jesus' instructions. So I hope that we can listen to Jesus' words and listen to his instructions and build our lives on firm foundations. Well, last week, after the service, I met with the young people on Zoom and we learnt a few Makaton signs. So I thought it would be nice today to say a prayer in sign. So let us pray. Jesus, thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for being my friend. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Well, really great to see you all again. And I hope you have a good week. And I look forward to seeing you really soon. Bye. Let us join together in prayer. Let us firstly thank God for all the good things we have, while remembering that so many people find it difficult to think other than how hard and challenging life is at this moment, and for obvious reasons. We're grateful for our family and friends, including all those offering to support in love people in need be it for material things or for care and compassion. We're grateful for our church family and for our leaders, and especially for Tim, who provides leadership with understanding, directing us all in reaching out to the wider community in Borowash and Upwick. Teach us to continue in these strange times to be a church without walls and showing our love to all in need. So let us pray for our neighbours, for all those with relatives who are ill, either because of the current threat from coronavirus or because of suspended or delayed treatment for life-threatening or debilitating conditions those concerned about loved ones living in care homes or in isolation because of their own health problems. But we thank you also that things are getting better in so many ways as the restrictions are slowly lifted. But we also pray that as these conditions change the risks will be minimised and controlled avoid any second outbreaks of the disease. Let us turn our thoughts to the world, thinking particularly not only of countries still so affected by the pandemic, such as America, India, Russia and a lot of South America, but also of those suffering oppression and extreme danger. Thinking of Hong Kong, Syria, and so many refugees subject to exploitation and mistreatment. O oh Lord, so many problems in this world. We can only bring them to you and trust with all our hearts that you are in all things and have the power to release us from these burdens and cares. Change men's hearts from evil and self-centred seeking of power to a more loving and caring actions, recognising that we are all equal in this world. 
So finally, a short prayer from words by George MacLeod, who was the founder of the Ion community. Christ above us, Christ beneath us, Christ beside us, Christ within us. What need have we for temples made with hands? We are your living temple. By grace alone, we are your living body, the only hope of clarity for the world. Blessed be your name, be your glorious gospel. Well, in a few moments, this Church Without Walls service will conclude with a prayer. And before that, as usual, just one or two notices. Um, first thing to say is, if you'd like to receive um, the letter that I sent out to um, the church family this week instead of a new sheet, or if you'd like to request prayer, or if you'd like to be in touch about anything else, um, the church web address will be um, on the screen as the service concludes. Please do use that to contact us if you need to. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Steve Fraser Burton and all the community volunteers for distributing uh, our community leaflet with details about how to access the food bank service that we're running. Um, every household in the community will have received a leaflet, which is wonderful. So thank you to Steve, thank you to Dan Bailey as well, and everyone else who has helped. Um, until we meet again, um, I pray that you and your loved ones will remain safe and well. And now a prayer.
Loving God, help us to seek to live by your word and your will and your ways and so build our lives on firm foundations which will sustain us in life's storms. May your peace and blessings fill our lives and help us to share your peace and blessing with those we meet this week. In Jesus' name. Amen.